Greetings YouTube, boys and girls. Pay careful attention now. We have an eBay PSA going on here and uh, somewhat of a um, uh, history lesson. I know people hate history and uh, just the word makes uh, just people, some people can't even say his, the word history makes their tongue curl makes them hyperventilate and all kinds of uh, physical things start happening to them. Anyway, um, I, the reason why I'm doing this is because I keep getting asked this question often and it's time for this PSA again. For the benefit of the new people and anybody else who doesn't know this because you're not sharing it with people. You're not letting other people know. You're not doing these yourself to let your viewers uh, see for themselves what's going on out there. You're shielding them from the truth. And uh, But like I said, you know, the, reporting these criminals uh, does get results. You know, they get punished, believe it or not. And uh, I keep telling people that. And, oh, nothing happens to them. You can't do nothing about it. You know, which is, you know, bunk. It's garbage. And I'll just show you why. Now, here's this image here. It's an interesting story, which I'll save for another PSA, unfortunately. But I liked it, so I made a copy. And uh, because some of you know that counterfeit money, they make counterfeit money. But some of you didn't know they made counterfeit coins. Anyway, the, you know, now if you look carefully at this dollar bill, let's see, there you go, better. Uh, you know, the, didn't you notice right off the bat the difference? This is an older version of the dollar bill. Um, and there's actually older versions than this, but just in mean, this particular example, which comes in a nice little frame that says the United States dollar story, which has different examples of real doll or dollar bills, let's put it that way. Those all happen to be counterfeit, and so is this. So they sell them framed. Why? So you can't touch it. I know some. I used to buy these all the time. I had a whole bunch of them until I found out that some, you know, they were making counterfeit ones, and I stopped buying them. And uh, how did I learn that they were counterfeit? Well, I mean, I knew these were counterfeit. I had no idea these were the coins. You know, these are all you know older dollar bills. And uh, but you know, a friend of mine, you know, he had one of these on his wall. And he also had a pet bird, um, and the bird, you know, he'd let the bird fly around, and the birds would always fly and land on the, uh, pic on the edge of the picture frames. And this particular frame fell off the wall, and, you know, the glass smashed because of the weight and uh, of the coins, and the, it was a glass cover. Usually it was plastic, but in his particular instance, it was glass, and it did shatter. I guess because he bought a better frame than this particular example that's shown here. It was a nice frame, so I guess because he paid a lot extra for the, you know, the uh, deluxe frame, shall we say. Anyway, it fell, the glass shattered, the dollar bill fell out, and what did he find? The back of the bill was blank. They didn't even bother printing the back. That's why they encase the cards now, they get the cards graded. So you can't do my patented field test to determine if the card's legit or not, which is, you know, the clear-cut way of doing it. And um, so with the money, too, they don't want you to touch it. Plus, they don't want you to touch the coins and because you could determine. Uh, there's other ways of determining that as well. And plus, there's ways of determining how money's counter or, you know, legit or not. And if you want to know, I could tell you. But it's not uh, t here nor there. Um Okay, here is uh, Collector's Universe. Okay, I couldn't find... I used to have this article. I made a copy of it, but that was on my old laptop. So I couldn't find the original one, but I did find it copied onto this form, Collector's Universe. You can go to this link if you wish to. Forums.collectors.com Message view dot CMF Question mark C-A-T-I-D equals 11 and... T and thread ID equals seven four seven six eight one. 
Okay, and then you can find this if you want. You could read it at your leisure. And this is from the Times Tribune, published Saturday, August 23rd uh, of 2008, at approximately 6.55 in the a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then the uh, Aaron L. Nisley, apologies if the, I butchered the name, is the staff writer. If anybody's familiar with the Times-Tribune.com, uh, you know, it's a real newspaper. If you're familiar with that newspaper, that's their website. And if you're familiar with that, um, uh, Pennsylvania, I'm thinking. Anyway, um, I mentioned this individual before, uh, Jamie Lee Nacero. Uh, no apologies there if I uh, butchered that name. Uh, he has a nickname. I don't know why they call him Nutcase, but anyway. It says, uh, Monroe County man admitted Friday to making as much as $10,000 selling fake rookie trading cards online site eBay. A scam that could land him in prison for up to 20 years. Jamie Lee Nacero, 25, of Marshalls Creek pleaded guilty to mail fraud after he was charged in federal court last month. He remains free while waiting sentencing scheduled for mid-November. In U.S. District Court, Judge Thomas I. Vanaski's court Friday. Anybody familiar with any of these individuals, it's good to contact them and ask them what's you know, going on with this case because you know this guy is still up to no good. And I'll explain why shortly. Anyway, okay, uh, assistant U.S. attorney, that's the perfect person to contact because he might not be the assistant uh, U.S. attorney anymore. He could have been, uh, could be in a better position. Anyway, he could have been promoted or uh, in a more significantly powerful position than he was at this time. Two years, a lot, uh, a lot of things change. Uh, Wayne P. Samuelson said, Mr. Nacero first came to the attention of investigators in December, okay? Now listen carefully, people, after, okay? Let me start again so you can understand clearly. If you can't read this yourself, you have a difficulty understanding, okay? For, okay, Mr. Nacero, for, now this is from the U.S. Dis, uh, uh, Assistant District Attorney, uh, Wayne P. Samuelson said Mr. Nacero first came to the attention of investigators in December after a person in California and another in Virginia reported they had been swindled. Now I understand why math is difficult for some people, but do I need to read that sentence again? After a person meaning one person in California and another person in Virginia reported that they had been swindled. That's all it took, people. Two people to file complaints, well written, obviously, from two different states. Boom, this guy was arrested, put away, and went to court. Simple as that. Can't get any simpler than that. I don't know why I keep hearing all the time, nothing will happen. If you know what you're doing, you know how to write complaints, you know who to send the complaints to, all it takes is two. In both cases, I'm re continue reading, apology for the rant, but that's what it is, because I'm tired of saying this over and over again. People keep asking over and over. I understand the new people don't know any better, but this is getting kind of old, people. How come people don't know this? In both, let me continue. In both cases, in both cases, just two, two, the victims were the winning bidders of what was listed as rookie trading cards. Now listen to this kicker. For star National Hockey League players Mario Lemieux and Patrick Wah, or Roy to all of you non-hockey fans, okay? Just two rookie cards, each guy or each complainant bought one rookie card of a hockey player that was counterfeit. From Mr. Nutcase here, 
uh, a well-known scammer, and obviously well-known scammer because he got arrested, and he's still selling on eBay to this day. But uh, further explanation follows. Okay, after sending their money to Mr. Nacero, former state college address, they received the counterfeit cards. State police, state, excuse me, state college police obtained a search warrant for the address where Mr. Nacero was living at the time. Let me get that into view. I think I'm off the screen already. State College Police obtained a search warrant for the address where Mr. Sarah was living at the time. Officer found receipt slips from eBay auctions and about 11,000 counterfeit trading cards for a variety of sports, according to Mr. Samuelson. Okay, mail for mail fraud crimes a maximum of twenty years in prison, fines of up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Judge Vanaski also may order Mr. Nacero to pay restitution. Uh, though Mr. Uh, Samuelson said the total amount, blah blah blah. Read it yourself. Okay, self-explanatory. I don't know what I need to explain more clearer to you people. Two complaints resulted in this a scammer with 11,000 counterfeit training cards at the time of his arrest. Whew, excuse me. And plus, two hockey trading cards as on top to boot it off. Go Canada. Uh, for my Canadian viewers. Not, for not falling for the, I can't do nothing about it, nothing's going to happen. To read more about the story, I don't know, some of you may be familiar with Sports Collectors Daily, your true die-hard collectors out there. There's the address if you're interested. Sentencing set in sports card mail fraud case. And just scroll down a little here. Oh yeah, Pennsylvania man was sentenced later this month in a case involving the sale of counterfeit sports card. A uh, Pennsylvania man who pleaded guilty to selling counterfeit sports card was sentenced for his crime on November 26th. Investigators found hundreds of fake sports cards at his home. You notice how they say here hundreds and the other, you know, the news site said there was 11,000. Okay, a search warrant executed after the complaints filed against. Okay, here you go again. Search warrant had been executed after complaints were filed against Nacero by two collectors in different states who had purchased cards by Nacero on eBay only to find out they weren't general when delivered by the U.S. Postal Service. A U.S. District Court judge uh, granted accepted uh, Nacero's guilty plea in mail for charges last summer. And then it said, you know, you can read it yourself if you want. Oh, no, it says here, if you go down further, sorry here. Okay, when they searched his home, 11,000 reprinted cards were found representing various sports. There you go, Mary Lee Lou, Patrick Roy. There you go. Oh, yeah, here they list some of his uh, eBay aliases. He had more than one, obviously. Why would he do that? Why would he have more than one account? He actually had several. He actually went by several different names as well, and I just couldn't find any information for purposes of this um, uh um, PSA, Scarecrow 2582, then Cropsy Collection was two of his uh, known accounts at that time, and he's still on eBay, still selling because that was his only livelihood. So, and he was supposed to be under uh, uh, some kind of. Uh, oh yeah, he also had to prove documentation or authentication of products purchased and sold on eBay for the purpose of the court in order to uh, stay uh, and continue selling them because he was uh, on probation. So what he did was he started his own authentication company, GMA Trading. He supposedly started several others. He sold cards like this. Now this individual seller here is linked to him because he sells all of these GMA traded cards. He has several of them on this page. They just keep going on and on. Now, I don't think this is him because, you know, he lists his name here, Daryl Spencer, and it's in Kentucky. He actually has a name and phone number. But he has so many of these cards, it's not even funny. And you can tell, you know, I mean, you know, this is a commonly counterfeited card, and it's in his case. And, uh, you know, so many people already uh, reported these are counterfeit. It's not funny. 
Dream big, people.